We're going to be looking at walls from an intermediate level, and foundation walls is where we're going to be starting. Okay, so let's pick up where we left off. Okay, we'll do our save as again. Okay, 0901, begin, save as, complete. Okay, so what are we doing here? We're going to be adding foundation walls. There we go. Okay, so we're going to be going to the existing phase, and we're going to start on our foundation plan existing. Okay, and let's go to wall. We're going to start with a generic 8-inch wall, and then even before we click our first point, we're going to edit type. So we're making our own type. We're going to duplicate this. We're going to call this one foundation wall, FW1-8 inches. And then under the structure, we're going to click on edit. Okay, so 8-inch thick. The function of this particular piece is just going to be one piece, its structure. And then the material, we're going to click in the material box and then click on that little extra button. And we'll go to concrete, cast in place concrete. Revit materials have a rendering texture, which will show up soon, a shade texture, a surface pattern, kind of like a surface hatch, and then a cut pattern whenever you cut the particular object all in one. And that really is the key to Revit speed throughout the process. So we'll just say OK to that, OK to that. And we're not quite done yet. Revit walls have functions as well. So this one, it is exterior in a way, but really it's foundation wall. Now, why do you have to change the function? Well, there's analysis, there's filtering tools, there's different reasons why you actually do really want to put that as whatever the correct function is. So we'll say okay to that. Okay, so we're starting on the base constraint underside of footing. Now, notice this. This is kind of an issue, you could say, with foundation walls. They actually have a depth component to them as opposed to a height. So most walls, if I just go into, let's say, the CMU, it has a height. Whereas if I go down into the foundation wall, it has a depth. So we have a couple options here. We could draw like from the top of foundation wall down. We could also just sort of override this whole depth idea and just go into the base constraint and the top constraint and just sort of force it to be where it's going to be. So what we'll do is we're going to go to existing and then we're going to go to the top of the foundation wall and we're going to pick on wall and then we're going to go to our foundation wall that we specified so we're going to draw from the top of the foundation wall down to now we could go down to the underside of footing and then actually offset it back up eight inches because we're going to have the depth of the footing okay so we're going to send it down to the underside of footing level and then back up eight inches now the location line this can be the finished face exterior in this case. Sometimes on exteriors, you want to go with the core face, and that's something we can look at in depth later on different wall types. Okay, well, just remember, always draw clockwise. Now, we're going to get some messages here. And each time I do that, it's saying, none of the elements created are visible in this particular view that we're in. You might want to check the settings and so on of the view. What that is saying is, I can't see what you just drew. And you know what? You're right, because we're cutting above the top of foundation and looking down. So I'm going to track back to the foundation plan existing. And now you can see it because we're actually cutting through this particular wall. Now let's just double back over here to the top of the foundation wall. If we want to see it, let's go to the view range of this view. And we're just going to give it a little bit of depth. So we're going to say, look down, you know, minus 12 inches and just say, OK. All right, now at least we can see the top of the foundation wall. We're not cutting through it, but at least we can see it. OK, back to foundation plan existing. And let's turn our view to a medium level of detail. That way we can see the actual hatch that's inside of there. OK, now it's time for the phase one stuff. So let's go to phase one, floor plans, foundation plan phase one. Now you can see the other walls, but you see them in gray because they're a different phase. Let's just right click on that one wall 
and I'm going to say create similar. Now, by create similar, it's just going to create foundation wall one. Okay, and the depth control is sort of going to be overridden. Now, what I'd like to do is just draw it. We're going to draw it clockwise, finish face exterior, that's good. And we're going to just deal with these because this is all part of the process. Let's hit escape. What do we do? We can't see it. Well, whenever you come into a problem like this, just go into a 3D view. So if I go into a 3D view, 3D show all, now you can see it got a little confused because it was actually sending it down eight foot three, something like that. So if we were to just click on those walls that went down the wrong way, let's just adjust this. We can do this logically. So we can say it starts here, underside of footing. We just want it to be offset by eight inches. Then it goes up to the top of foundation wall. Apply. Okay, and then there it is. Always like to go to 3D to confirm what we've done. So let's do the same thing in the existing heading. Let's go to our 3D view. And there we go. So let's look at this one and make sure this one looks okay. We might click on that and it looks like everything's fine there. Good, so we have our foundation walls. Close it in Windows, save, and then close.